Hi everyone, I'm Si Chin again, and today we're going to get creative with watercolors. The artist that we're going to look at is Mr. Lim Cheng Ho, and his work is titled Nocturne. Take a look at this work. What do you see? If you answered a fishing village, then you're absolutely right. Mr. Lim loved working outdoors, and he painted the world that surrounded him. He would often go around Singapore with his fellow artists to look for things to draw and paint. Mr. Lim used impressionist techniques, blurring details and replacing specific shapes with broad colours. Just like this example that I have for you. On the left, you see a photograph that I've taken of a view outside my house, and on the right, I have used photo editing software to blur out the details, much like the impressionists. Using Mr. Lim Cheng Ho's Nocturne as an inspiration for creating beautiful impressions, I'm going to show you some simple and easy watercolour tips and hacks so that we can use everyday materials at home to make pleasing pictures. We're going to try three different ways of creating colours, shapes and moods. Okay, let's take a look at the materials that we will be using for today. First of all, prepare some salt and a container with water to mix the salt. You might want to label these special materials that we will be using and have specific brushes for them. Next, mix in some laundry detergent, dilute it with some water. Prepare some water, some paper cut to size. We will be using A5 size paper so that we start small but eventually you can go with larger sizes. Prepare some cling film. These can be cut to size to fit your A5 size paper. Some watercolour paints, brushes, a rag, and markers which are optional. So first of all, we'll explore simple blotting. This involves folding the paper in half or three quarters so that you can create shapes quite easily this way. So let's start off by getting some of these colours. I'm going to be using red, blue and purple. You might want to decide where you want to put it. And while it is still wet, continue working quickly. Getting some blue in. And then lastly, I'll get some purple in as well. One way of doing this is also getting a lot of paint and kind of like splashing it. Or you could kind of do it this way as well. So once that is done, fold the paper three quarters or in half and open up. And you'll get a very nice image that way. We'll leave this aside to dry. For the next tryout, we'll be using some salt, so we will need to mix some of this salt into our container of water. One tablespoon is kind of good, so while you have kind of mixed it nicely, okay, you can start painting it, but make sure you go through the paper fairly thoroughly. And once that is done, now I'm going to use orange, brown and blue. So I'm going to have a little bit of orange. And let's see the interactions on the paper. Just let it spread. So you can see some of the areas in which I put the salt and it hasn't dried. It works pretty well. So you can kind of create some of these moods by using some of these salted portions. Generally, you want to have pigment that's a little bit more wet. You can let the colors mix a little bit. Sometimes if you need to, you can always brush some of these areas a little bit with salted water again and continue some of your explorations. So there are many ways of kind of exploring this, the use of this salt water. You can create really interesting patterns out of all of this. I'm going to set this aside, let it dry. So for the next watercolour hack that I'm going to show you, we'll be using laundry detergent. And for this particular material, you will need thicker paper. Previously, we were using regular drawing paper, but for this, you will need at least 250 GSM or more. 
The paper I'm using here is about 300 GSM. This will prevent the laundry detergent from being absorbed into the paper easily. So get some masking tape just to kind of tape down the paper so that it doesn't curl up as you kind of spread the water. So use the laundry detergent water in the same way that we did with the salt. Okay, so paint it over. So once that is done, you can start adding some of your colors. So I'm going to go with the same orange, brown and blue. Let it spread out a bit. So you can see it interacting with the laundry detergent. Remember to wash your hands okay, after you are done with this because you'll be touching some of the laundry detergent that's diluted. Gives it a very spidery feel. So at the end of the day, when you're trying these materials, it's about what suits you best, what helps you to create the mood that you want. And so likewise, sometimes if you feel that it is not spreading enough, you can just layer a little bit of the laundry detergent water. And so that's the watercolor hack for using laundry detergent. And lastly, the watercolor tip that I'm going to share with you involves using cling film with watercolor to help us generate yet another random pattern with the colors that you like. I'll be using the view outside my window for inspiration. Okay, so I'll be using yellow, green and blue colors. Okay, so for this particular one, we're going to set aside the drawing paper and instead bring the cling film to the center. So right now you might want to just do a little quick wash. So this kind of prepares the cling film to take on more paints. So once that is done, you can start adding different colors to it. So I'm going to add my yellow. Just kind of like dab it around. These are somewhat the colors I see during sunset outside my house. Add your second color, which for me is blue. The last color for me is green. So once you're kind of done with that, get ready your drawing paper and place it down over the cling film. And then you can kind of wrap this down and turn it around. Gently, carefully, start rubbing some of these to kind of mix the colors a little bit. When you think you're satisfied with it, you can remove the cling film. And voila, you have a very nice mood that's been created just using purely your cling film. So I'm going to try with the thicker paper. And we're going to see the results of that. So I'm going to use the thicker paper. Get your paper ready. And then press it down. So as you can see, sometimes with the thicker paper, there's a bit more room for you to spread the colors. Our mood board. Okay, and then you can kind of set that aside to let it dry. You might want to speed up the process by using a hair dryer. Finally, as the paint dries, add lines using a marker or a brush to reveal what you see in your colors. Maybe you see a butterfly, or maybe you see a flamenco dancer. Alternatively, you could also use your paintings as a backdrop or a background. What about you? What have you drawn or painted around your area?
be like Mr. Lim Cheng Ho and draw lines to suggest the flats or houses which you can see outside your window. And lastly, when you get the chance to, come down to the National Gallery Singapore to check out Mr. Lim Cheng Ho's Nocturne.